Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the HJC B10 helmet. If you're after old school styling from a helmet without compromising on the functions of a modern one, then I'd say this HJC V10 is well worth a place on your shortlist. Often helmet companies will say a helmet has retro style and modern performance, but it's not always the case. But this V10 delivers a solid 1970s and 80s street riding look, yet it's got a lot of the features you'll find on bang up to date helmets. It has functioning ventilation, a removable comfort liner with emergency release cheek pads. It's got a toolless visor change with a lock function as well. There's a pin lock visor insert and it's prepped and ready for a choice of HJC official intercoms. And it's also approved to the latest ECE 2206 safety standard. So let's run through the essentials of this helmet in a bit more detail. The shell is a very straightforward and neat shape and it's made from fiberglass. This size medium V10 weighs in on our scales at 1444 grams, which makes this one of the lightest ECE 2206 helmets we've reviewed. Venting comes through these six inlets on the chimba, which can be opened and closed by a slider on the inner surface of that chimba. I found that vent effective at bringing through fresh air when I was riding my Yamaha FZ1 phaser in this helmet. I also tried this on a Suzuki V-Strom 800DE and the touring screen on that bike blocked airflow to the lid. You've got to remember that venting performance will always depend on whether air can get to those vents in the first place. The brow vents on this helmet are two sliding tabs just above the eye port which open up and allow air directly through to your forehead. In theory these should be great but I didn't really notice an immediate rush of air coming through them when I rode my phaser so I would say any cooling effect really is more long term. In HJC's early pictures and description for this helmet, they showed an outlet vent at the lower rear of the helmet, round about here. They've clearly changed the spec before the helmet actually came out though, as there is no vent on the helmet, and the latest pics from HJC as well don't show an exhaust vent. There are channels in the EPS impact liner that allow warm air to move around inside the lid, but there isn't actually anywhere for that hot air to escape to the outside. The visor on this helmet does a good job of mixing throwback styling with the performance that we expect from today's helmets. It only has one full intermediate step between fully open and fully closed. This isn't the sort of gap that I'd ever really want to use while I'm riding. It's more useful at traffic lights. However, there are lots of ridges on the mechanism surface that stop the visor just slipping all the way to the closed position. You can use these to set a smaller gap at the bottom here. You can get around 15 millimeters from visor lip to helmet seal. It's not the strongest grip though, and I found the visor would slip shut at speeds much above 50 miles per hour. Once the visor comes to rest on the seal, a push on the top of the visor, or by gripping the chin bar and pushing this tab down, will stop the visor opening of its own accord in the wind flow. Now, this is the same tab as HJC have used on several of their other recent helmets that I've reviewed, and I found them inconsistent in the amount of force you need to lock the visor and release it again. This one takes very little effort to lock or release it, but on other helmets I've needed to give the visor a very firm push in either direction. If you find it locks tight, then pushing the back section of the mechanism just here releases its grip on the visor and makes it very easy to lift. The mechanism for the visor, it's old school in that the visor is screwed to the helmet. There's a neat way of making it toolless though. By pulling out the ring around the screw, you can remove and reinstall the visor without the need for a screwdriver. There's a Pinlock 70 anti-mist insert supplied with the helmet, which covers pretty much all of the eye port, so it won't hinder your vision. And if you need to adjust the tension, adjust the screws on the outside of the helmet, make it easy to alter the distance between the two pins, which allows you to set that tension. There's no internal sun visor with this helmet, so you'll need to go old school if you want to beat the glare. That means either wearing sunglasses or running a tinted main visor. Now, strictly speaking, tinted main visors aren't legal for use on the road. In practice, plenty of people do run tinted visors and they have no trouble with the law, generally as long as they're sensible and don't wear them in poor light, or especially not at night. Moving to the inside of the helmet, again, there's retro styling and up-to-date materials. The base of the cheek pads is synthetic leather with stitched ribs, as is the section at the top of the eye port as well. The liner is fully removable and it's all mounted with very simple press studs. There are emergency release cheek pads, so if a paramedic wants to remove the lid, they can make it easier and safer by just pulling the pads out before they start. There's a removable chin curtain too, which also has that ribbed synthetic leather. The tops of the cheek pads, they've been thinned out to make room for spectacle arms, just around here, and I found this fine when I wore this helmet with my spectacles inside. The strap fastener for the HJC is nice and simple. It's a pair of D-rings.
Behind the liner, there are recesses for speakers. They're decent size. They're big enough even for a pair of Cardo 40 millimeter speakers. And the V10 is also prepared for HJC's first generation of intercoms. So those are the 10B and the 20B units, which are made for HJC by Senna. The battery for the intercom goes in this chamber at the neck roll, and then the control unit clips to the shell somewhere around about here. That is the neatest way of adding a comm system to this helmet, but there's nothing to stop you fitting your own choice of comms if you prefer something different. Right, let's cover sizing, approvals and pricing. The HJC V10 is approved to ECE 2206 for the road, as all new models released from 2023 onwards must be. There's no rating under the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme as we record this. We'll add that rating to the description for this video if one does appear. This helmet's not ACU gold for track use, but I wouldn't expect track riders to be particularly interested in a helmet like this anyway. Sizing, the V10 runs a range from extra small up to double extra large. There are three shell sizes. The smallest covers lid sizes extra small and small. The middle one does medium and large, and then the biggest size of shell accommodates helmets XL and 2XL. I wore a medium for this review as I do in the vast majority of lids, and I found it perfectly comfortable. In terms of pricing, the V10 is £259.99 in plain colours or it's £299.99 in graphics like this grape design. Overall, I've been very impressed with the V10. The styling is a matter of taste. You don't need me to tell you whether or not you like it. For what it's worth, I like the styling. With some retro lids I've worn as well, you have to suffer at least a little bit to get the stripped back looks. With this helmet, the lack of sun visor and a reduction in venting capability, especially on top, do put it behind the very latest helmets in terms of practicality. But the venting isn't bad, especially that chin vent, and using a tinted visor will protect you from glare better than a sun visor anyway, as long as you're happy to take the chance with the law. You get modern protection, modern comfort, there's a decent visor with a proper pin lock, the venting's okay, and the choice of whether to go for an integrated comm system or add your own is also something that will appeal to a lot of riders. For me, that all adds up to a damned good choice if you want a retro helmet. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the HJC V10, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.